Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking you through my entire unread TBR. So, uh, for a lot of booktubers that might be a few hundred books. For me, I've got 16 books to talk to you about today. And I've talked before about how I manage my books and I try not to have a massive unread TBR. Now that is no judgement on people who do. Um, it's just me personally, I get a bit stressed if my TBR gets too out of control. Um, up in our bedroom I've got three, like a stack of three shelves if that makes any sense like one above the other and the bottom shelf of that is for my unread tbr so i thought i would talk through those books because some of them you might have seen in previous wrap-ups if they've been gifted to me some i've had for a while and haven't spoken about yet and also i've had some that have just come in this month that you won't have seen yet so i thought it'd be quite interesting just to chat through them there's a real mix of stuff um two disclaimers before we start one is that jack is prowling around so if you can hear something moving around that'll be him uh, it's very unlikely he'll let me let me grab him to bring him on camera but he is around and two it's very hot here today and i've got all the windows open so we're gonna have to deal with traffic noises and my neighbors but that's just life right let's start with the first stack so the first book on my tbr is one that i know nothing about um and that is want to play by pj tracy uh this is a book that my husband read um and thought i might like and that is all i know about it all i know is that it's a thriller he likened it to karen slaughter who was an author he's been reading a lot of during lo lockdown much to my joy um and this cover has got bloody fingerprints on it so i'll whack that on my tbr shelf and i will give that a go very shortly Next is a book, a random book, that my lovely friend Charlotte from Books and Bargains sent me this month, and that is The Ice Maid's Tale. Nice pun. By Mandy Morton. It's part of the number two feline detective agency. Um, so I was having a bit of a rough week last week, and so Charlotte sent me this book, and it really confused me because it came from Amazon, but there was no note with it, and I just remember staring at it and being like, what is this? I've never heard of this book before. And also, how has someone sent me something? Like, it, there could only be a handful of people that have my address so that they could send something that's not on my wish list. Uh, so I, I texted my friends and to start with, Charlotte was like, no, no, it wasn't me. And she was, as usual, being a wind up. So um, yeah, she sent me this book. She said it's really fun. Again, I don't really know a massive amount about it. Something about a disappearance of the town's kittens. Um... Who were the strange cats living in Witherfork, Witherfork Woods? Will the ancient prophecy of the Ice Maid's Tale become a reality? And can Hetty and Tilly defrost the fish, fish fingers in time for tea? It sounds really fun. I oh, know, I'm definitely up for it. And I really like this cover. It's really funny. Right. Next, I got two books from the same author. First of all, I've got Clap When You Land by, um, by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I've also got With the Fire on High, also obviously by Elizabeth Acevedo. This one was gifted to me by my lovely friend Simone this month, and I'm really excited to get to this. This is about two sisters, or two girls who don't know anything about each other. Um, and then the father dies in a plane crash, and they realise that he has been living a double life. And so I would assume it's about grief and them coming to terms with the fact that their father had a double life um and is this one in verse yes this is in verse It'll be my first book i've ever read in verse so i'm quite excited about that and i've heard some really really good things about this and this cover is also absolutely stunning and then i have also got as i said with the fire on high um this is not in verse this is yeah that's in prose um and this was i won a giveaway from lauren from she is such a lauren and she sent me this book one other i'm going to talk about in a minute and also oryx and crake which has gone straight onto my red margaret atwood shelf because i have read that book um but that will be the copy that i read when my book club gets to it this one i'm also very excited for um and another beautiful cover i just yeah covers i'm such a sucker for a nice cover um this book we follow a teenage girl 16 year old girl who's got i think a two-year-old yeah two-year-old daughter and she wants to be a chef and i believe it's about what happens to her and i love books they've got um food like descriptions of food in them and i've heard the food descriptions of this are really good as well as the book itself just in general being a real gem so excited to get to this and then the other book that i won in lauren's giveaway was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. This I have heard so much about since I joined Booktube. And I try not to listen to Booktube hype anymore because sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but there's something about this that just really appeals to me. 
Um, it's a YA fantasy, which I always say isn't usually my thing, but some of the favourite books I've read this year have been YA fantasy, so clearly it is, and I need to stop saying that. Um, I think this has got a female, female romance in it, and uh, each year, eight beautiful girls are chosen as paper girls to serve the king. It's the highest honour they could hope for, and the most demeaning. This year, there's a ninth, but instead of paper, she's made of fire. So yeah, I'm very excited about this. I think this is part of either a duology or a trilogy. I've heard great things about the second one, I think, but I've heard really good things about this. And again, this cover, I feel like, so, I feel like that's what all I'm gonna say in this video. It's like, oh, look at this cover, isn't it beautiful? But it's very pretty. So yeah, excited for that. Next is a book that was recommended directly to me from um, the lovely Aoife from Words of Clover. I nearly said her old channel name then. Um, she did this wonderful video, which I will link in the description. She does this great series where she recommends books to booktubers, which is really good because you get a load of book recommendations, but also booktuber recommendations as well. And she did one for me and she said some very, very kind things about me, which actually made me a bit tearful. Um, but this was the book that she recommended, which is The Fourth Monkey by J.D. Barker. Never heard of this before, never heard of J.D. Barker before. Um, and it says on the front, a serial killer's final victim, days to find her alive. And I was like, yeah, that's me. Um, and Aoife said that she knows that I like the darker things because I like reading uh, Karen Slaughter, for example. And so she recommended me this and I am gonna try and pick this up in August. One of the reasons that I'm making this video is like, I'm really conscious that my reading is gonna drop off a cliff because I'm gonna be starting my PGCE in September and I will leave um, the video up there and in the description um, if you haven't seen that where I talked about it. Um, so I wanted to talk about these books and like give them a chance to be shown because it might be a while before I get to them. Um, but I'm hoping to try and squeeze this into my August TBR. Next is another book that I was gifted very kindly, I think by Laura, yes. Yeah, Laura from what everyone else is reading. Um, she sent me this, Social Creature by Tara Isabella Burton. And I don't know a massive amount about this. I must have heard someone raving about it, but I think it's like a Mr. Ripley type story. So it says, Lavinia has it all. Lavinia has an apartment on the Upper East Side. Lavinia goes to glittering parties that last from dusk till dawn. Lavinia wants to see, seize life and live it to the fullest. Lavinia is going to die soon. Louise knows this. You know this. So yeah, I'm very intrigued by this and it's quite short. So I think it would be yeah, it's less than 300 pages. So I think it would be a quick read. Um, and yeah, look at that cover. So yeah, thank you for that, Laura. Next <laughs> is a book that's going to be a project uh, because it's massive. I'm just trying to work out how many pages it is. Oh boy, it's 872 pages. Um, and it's a book that my brother sent me to celebrate a thousand subscribers, which is so kind of, kind of him. That book is A Place of Greater Safety by Hilary Mantel, which I think is about the French Revolution. Oh, that's the Amazon slip. Um, this is about the French Revolution, as far as I know. And it's a beast. <laughs> um, like I said, this will be a project book, I think. I think it's one that I, I think I might save it for like the winter time. Um, from like October onwards and just read a little bit at a time until I'm done. Um, ben said that he really enjoyed it. Hilary Mantel is one of his favourite authors. She is an author that I've read a few books. I've read Wolf Hall and Bring Out the Bodies and I did like them but I also found the pace quite slow so I'm slightly nervous to tackle a book of that length from her but I will try and trust my, do my brother's judgement and give it a go probably towards the end of the year. Right, I'm just going to lean and get the next stack. Okay. Next is a book I bought myself, which is The Thirteenth Tale by Dan Diane Setterfield. I have already read this, but I read it years ago. Um, like, maybe when it first came out. Um, oh, no, that's a complete lie. I didn't buy this myself. I put this on my wish list and somebody very kindly sent it to me. Sorry, I had it in my head that I bought this. And it wasn't at all. It's from Marianne from Copper Books, who I will link in the description. Um, she sent it as a little congratulations for doing a li my first live show, which was for Books Books of the Rave. So thank you, Marianne, and I'm sorry. I had, don't know why I had it in my head that I bought this. Actually, I think it's because I sent a copy to Harriet from Mary and Rosie Reads, so maybe it's that. This is a really beautiful edition. I love this edition. Um, and yeah, I read this when, I think when it first came out. Um, when did this come out? 2006, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and this, is much like most of Diane Setterfield's books, it's kind of a historical family drama. Um, I think we've got a 
yeah, so we've got a current day timeline and then it jumps back in time and it's all wrapped up in this mystery around this family. Um, it says on the front, abandoned house, two parallel stories and a secret that will change everything. And I feel like it's somebody who comes in to take somebody's life story down, something like that. And I just remember it being the first book that I read and then gasped out loud when I got to the twist. And I can't remember what the twist is anymore. So I'm very happy to have another copy of this and it's definitely one I'm gonna get to. I'm gonna say this with all of them as soon as I can. Next is another book that I was gifted or did I buy this myself? No, this was gifted. <laughs> um, I've been very lucky. Oh, this was also from Marianne, again for the live show. That's why they're next to each other on the shelf because I always put them, I do it in high order because that's how I roll. But also I try and do it in like the order they've come in so that I read I know which ones are the oldest. You don't really need that insight into my brain. Anyway, this is The Method by Shannon Kirk. And I've seen, again, Harriet talk about this quite a bit. I think she's currently rereading it. Um, and it says on the front, kidnapped, helpless, looks can be deceiving. And I believe it's about a uh, teenage girl. Yeah, she's 16, pregnant and kidnapped. And it's about her turning the tables on her kidnappers. So this looks really intriguing. Um, and it's just over 300 pages. So again, it'll be a, quite a quick read. Just compare that again with the Hilary Mantel, all my days. Uh, yeah, I've heard really good things about this. I've heard it's dark and twisted, which as we all know, is my bag. Next is a book I definitely bought myself, for sure this time. Um, I bought this book because I've become really close friends with Leanne from Literary Diversions, and one of her favorite authors is Agatha Christie. I've only ever read one Agatha Christie, which was The Murder on the Orient Express, which is a Praro book. Um, and Liam and I were talking about it and she said you need to try a Miss Marple. So I have gone with The Murder at the Vicarage, which I believe is the first Miss Marple book. Um, or it's the one that Leanne recommended. I can't remember how I reached this conclusion. Anyway, I bought this. It's a very nice edition. Don't know anything about it. Uh, yes, this is the first Mar Miss Marple mystery. One which, which tests all her powers of observation and deduction. So again, I think I'm probably going to save this until the autumn. Because it feels like a cosy mystery type book. But I really like these editions. And yeah, that's one I bought because of Liam. Then this is a book, again, that was gifted, I think, by my friend Charlotte. Yes, uh, not Charlotte from Books and Bargains. A different Charlotte. Um, who I will leave her Instagram in the description because she's not a booktuber or a bookstagrammer um, but she does make fantastic candles which I really enjoy so I'll leave you a link so you can check her out if you want to. This is Shutter Island by Dennis Lehane. Um, I love the film of this but I've never read the book so I put it onto my wish list and Charlotte very kindly sent it to me. Um, and yeah I'm just intrigued to give it a go. Uh, I don't know how much to tell you because I already know what what happens but it's basically i think it's in the 1940 or 1950s it's after the second world war i think um and a detective goes to shutter island which is a prison on a island um to investigate the disappearance of a woman and that's all i can say about that i love the film so we'll see if the book lives up to it i've heard very mixed things about it some people say it's great other people say it's really slow um it's over 300 pages but the text is massive, so we'll give that a try. Then I've got such a random book. Uh, so I bought this for my husband for our, our recent wedding anniversary. And one of the TV shows that he watches all the time is Fast and Loud, which is about a garage in Texas where they make like hot rod cars and like flip cars and all that kind of stuff. And he's really into it and we watch it. He watches it most nights whilst I'm reading. Um, and so when I went on to have a look for anniversary gifts, I put in, like, the name of the garage is called, um, what are they called? Gas Monkey. Gas Monkey Garage. Don't know whether it went out of my brain. So I put that in, like, Gas Monkey Gifts, and then this came up, and I sort of bought it as a joke, and then Gary read it and said he really enjoyed it. So it's Fast and Loud, Blood, Sweat and Beers by Richard Rawlings with Mark D'Agostino, I think. And this is going to be probably niche, but... Gary said it was really fun and it gave some really good like backstory and content context to the TV show and I thought I'd whack it on my TBR just as something different and fun to read at some point so hopefully that'll be a quick easy read. We've got three left so we are almost there. I've got another book, wow this is really heavy and it's not even a hardback, another book I was gifted, this was from Nicole, 
um, from a beautiful cast of books to celebrate a thousand subscribers and it's A Killer's Mind by Mike Omar um, and I cannot remember anything about this oh it says okay so um, A Killer's Mind is her playground is what it says on the back and I think we're following a yeah it's an FBI profiler we're following a serial killer and that's I'm already in I don't want to know any more than that I also really like this cover I feel like it's going to be claustrophobic and tense and I'm into it. All right, two more books and then we're done. One more, uh, this book is, so I'm just going to stretch my legs out over here, is a book that I bought this month. Um, and that book is White Rage by Carol Anderson. I read Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race earlier this year, which was very eye-opening and is one that I would highly recommend especially if you're based in the UK because it is based on looking at UK racism um this is based on American this is written by an American woman but it's written by um a black American woman which I feel like is really important there is another book that a lot of people have been reading recently called White Fragility um which I've also heard good things about but it's written by a white person and I personally would rather read from the black perspective if I can. So this is non-fiction um, and it's as it says here, the unspoken truth of our racial divide. And I think a lot of people have been reading this so you've probably seen it around. I actually had to wait a couple of weeks to get it because it had gone out of print, which was great because so many people had bought it. Hopefully there's people also reading it. Um, I am trying to fit this into my July TBR, which at the moment is looking unlikely because it's pretty full with uni stuff, but I will absolutely definitely be reading this in August if I don't read it in July and I have a feeling it's going to be impactful and quite tough reading so yeah that's that one and then the very last book is one that I was gifted this month by my lovely friend Leanne who sent it to me because I was having a bad week bless her and she sent me this book which then made me cry which you'll see in my wrap up although I don't think I actually cried on camera but it did make me cry because it's just such a beautiful thing to send somebody and that is this stunning edition of Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. and not only is it hardback and beautiful I mean look at the spine um it's the it's the interactive edition so it's got oh that's the door opening um so it's got all of these like interactive bits like this I think you can fold out and we find some other bits like some of the illustrations are just absolutely breathtaking so like this I guess pops up it's really hard to do it with, without lying it flat um but yeah I was absolutely blown away I saw these additions mentioned on Mary's channel so I added them to my wish list and literally this into the next day look at this um literally the next day Leanne sent me this so thank you so very much Leanne and lovely with Helen because I know it was from you as well absolutely made my day um I read Peter Pan last year and just a full transparency I didn't love it um and there are some big issues with it and I will leave Olivia from Olivia Catastrophes um, review linked up there and in the description because she did a much better job at dissecting it than I did um so it's not there, there's a lot of problems with Peter Pan however this was a beautiful gift and I'm very excited at some point to sit and flip through it so those were all the books on my TBR that's my entire unread TBR I haven't included the books that are on my July TBR because you guys will be seeing them very shortly in my wrap up um, but this is what I've got left to read so leave me a comment below tell me how many books are on your TBR if you're comfortable giving that number and which of these books do you think I should read first like where do I start I hope this has been fun thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one thanks guys bye